This Model Y has been through a lot over the past 10,000 miles, including a cross-country road trip through some extreme weather and even a collision. But how has it held up? We're going to share things like cost of ownership, battery degradation, the pros, the cons, and what we like and don't like about it. We decided to get a Model Y for her once she graduated to be our family car and to fit these guys in it as well for the extra space. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now after 10,000 miles, our main cost has been charging, but thanks to six months of free supercharging, which was an end of year incentive at the time we got this Model Y, our costs there have been very minimal. Now the supercharger network has grown a ton over the past year in Las Vegas, and because of that, we've been able to take advantage of our free supercharging by charging a whopping 94% of the time at the superchargers here locally. And because our cost is nothing for that, we'll estimate the cost of what it would be for you guys to charge this much at superchargers. But do keep in mind, going to superchargers this much is not the norm for most Tesla owners, including us. For our Model 3, we charge at home 99% of the time, at least, in our garage, unless we're going on a road trip or something like that. And although that's very cheap, it's not completely free. The national average for cost per kilowatt hour is 18 cents, and it can be as low as 10 cents for off-peak and overnight hours. So we'll use this as an estimate for at-home charging. Now, supercharger rates can vary depending on time and location. You can see the exact charging cost at certain charges via the app or Tesla navigation. They're usually more expensive than at-home charging, so for this, we'll use an average of between 30 and 40 cents per kilowatt hour at superchargers. That seems to be the average range, but again, they're all different depending on location and time. Our efficiency over the past 10,000 miles has been about 285 watt hours per mile, which means we've consumed about 2,850 kilowatt hours. And if you're unfamiliar with all these terms, don't worry, here's the important stuff. After 2,850 kilowatt hours, if we charged at home 100% of the time, we would have spent between $285 and $513 in electricity via charging. At that same kilowatt hour rate, if we charge at superchargers 100% of the time and had to pay for it, we would have spent roughly between $855 and $1,140. So you can see between charging at home and superchargers, even though it's cheaper than gas, there is quite a bit of a difference. But let's throw those gas car numbers up here just for comparison's sake. We know gas prices vary a lot, but I'm going to use a gas price of $3.75 per gallon as that seems to be around the national average. Additionally, I'll assume an average of 25 miles per gallon for gas cars, which again seems to be around average. After 10,000 miles in a gas car at 25 miles per gallon, we would have consumed about 400 gallons of gas, and 400 gallons of gas at a price of $3.75 a gallon would cost us about $1,500. So if you're a data nerd just like me, hopefully you'll appreciate this, but let's throw it all together so we can look side by side. Model Y 100% at home charging between $285 and $513. Model Y 100% supercharging would be between $855 and $1,140, and the average gas car at gas stations, about $1,500. And you can actually go to the charging steps section of the Tesla app to see exactly how much you save by driving a Tesla. But again, take this screenshot with a grain of salt because we've been taking advantage of free supercharging, but here's a screenshot of our Model 3 just to give you an idea of what this app looks like with real numbers. So like I said, charging has been our biggest expense here, but our total costs, let's break down those as well. The vehicle price was $46,490, and we did take advantage of the $7,500 tax credit. And with that purchase, like I said, we got six months of free supercharging. And these purchase prices are always changing, but right now it's about as affordable as it's ever been to get a Model Y. Our total charging cost has been $37. We also spent about $40 getting our tires rotated one time. And we did buy a gallon of windshield washer food because we drove through this freaking crazy snowstorm on our giant road trip, and it was about $5. So adding all those expenses up, we spent $82 taking this car 10,000 miles. Now this is primarily JoJo's car, so with that, I will hand it over to your guys' favorite YouTuber to have her talk about her experience driving this car 10,000 miles. So on my experience, you know, one thing I like about it is like getting in the car, uh, it's easy it's just like you can, i can see everything from the dashboard and you know in front of me i'm only 5'3 so i feel like having an suv is really important for me in setup a sedan so this is a really good thing for my owner's perspective also there is a software update you know you can always check on your phone or like you get an alert on your on your app saying that you know there's a software update and the good thing about it it's free and 
you can do it anytime you want as long as your car is connected to the Wi-Fi. For an example, an upgrade that didn't come with the car when we when we got it. So and now this is recent after we upgraded, we updated. So it's gonna be when you turn when you put the car in reverse, you can see the line here and also on the screen. Like I said, it wasn't available when we got the car and now it is available. Another example is you can customize your lock sound. So when you just go to your to your app on your phone, I mean on your on your Tesla, just click the toy box, lock sound, and you can just click from here. Or you can download it through your USB. How about when it comes to like ride quality? Like how is the suspension? How is the noise when you're driving on a highway and the city streets, all that stuff? I haven't driven a fancy car. I, my first car was a Honda Civic and this one is my second car. This is my first SUV and I'd say that it didn't it doesn't bother me like you know I always have my radio on my music on so I, I guess that you know covers the sound from the outside and I'm always like focused on the road. Sure so it's not like Rolls Royce but it's not like bumpy or loud that you notice anyway. Right no no it just depends on like here in Vegas it's like the road is always bumpy so it's like I feel like I'm so used to it. All right, so there's your first-hand owner experience. Now let's talk a bit about the battery, the degradation. So when it was new, we had 330 miles of EPA range. There's a couple ways to look at battery degradation over time. I'm gonna talk about three of them that we can use to get a somewhat accurate idea. The first being third-party apps like Tesla. Not a recommendation, not a sponsor, but they do some stuff where they look at the battery charging data and extrapolate some data from that to predict your full mileage based on a full battery and according to them we have 317 miles of full range at 100 percent battery after 10,000 miles a second way you can look at your battery range if you look at the screen here if you tap on the percent you can just switch to miles there so if you charge to 100 percent you can do this and see how much that you have i don't know how accurate that is if you want to calculate that it might be around 317 but that's another option for you as well and third, the most accurate way you can do it is probably going to service mode on your Tesla here. I wouldn't recommend this. It runs a battery health test, which drains the battery completely to empty and then charges it completely to full. So you are getting a pretty accurate estimation there, but just going completely empty and completely full isn't the best for your battery over time. Also keep in mind, Tesla batteries tend to degrade the most after the first 10 to 20,000 miles of use. So after about 20,000 miles, you'll see a pretty good plateau and degradation. So your rate of degradation won't be nearly as much the longer that you drive it. And also if you're still worried, Tesla does offer a warranty. I think it's eight years or 100,000 or 120,000 miles. I gotta double check, but a warranty to where if your battery by that point is less than 70% of what it was when it was brand new, they'll replace it for free. This is very rare and far and few between, but there is a warranty if that does happen. Now let's talk about space. The space in this car is really awesome and that's one of the biggest reasons why you should get a Model Y. Now let's, let's go outside and let me show you how it looks. On the exterior of the Model Y, it is similarly comparable to RAV4. However, on the interior, it has a lot of space and since this is a Tesla, it doesn't have any engines. So we have more space. We put our stuff here, whatever, our gym outfit, our seat covers and all that after we go to the gym. So that's really perfect for us. Okay, now let me show you the back seat. Okay. Lots of space. Very clean interior. You can put the chair down. Both of them you can. Let me show you the back, the, the trunk. Okay. Very spacious and you have more compartments on side corners. And when you bought the car, it comes with this one. You, if you don't want it, you can take it off. You can just like pick this up and just slide it over. That's easy. And you have more space here. You can put your freezer or like luggages, whatever, whatever works for you. As you can see, there's a lot of space here. You can put the chair down like this and you can camp from here. Me and Carmen camped here one time when we were on our way to Chicago. Just so you can see, this is the leg room. I'm 5'3 and I have a lot of space. I'm also 5'3 so you can see, no, I'm six feet tall. And I have a couple inches here as well, and it's pretty comfortable. But also while I'm back here, let's take a look at the white seats, especially after 10,000 miles. These haven't been used too much, but even the front seats will show you, they're super, super clean. They hold up really, really well. 
10,000 miles isn't a ton, not like 100,000 miles, but so far they've been great and no stains, anything like that. We love these. They look so nice and so clean. Still look brand new after 10,000 miles. We've used two products on these seats so far. The first being a leather shield, which we highly recommend. Wipe it on once every year or so. Adds an extra layer of protection. And the second being a Chemical Guys leather cleaner. We just spray it on every once in a while when we clean the car. And as you can see, it works really great because our seats are shiny white and they look brand new. Now back to the back seat. We don't use these much, so we're not worried about it, but I have seen videos, people with Tesla's white interiors for a long time, where over time, the seatbelt rubbing against this part of the leather here will leave a mark or get some discoloration along this little seam here, which seems to be one of the things that could damage these white seats the most. So I've seen a product, I can't recommend it. We don't have it obviously, because we don't really use a back seat too much that will, the product is like a little seatbelt razor thing where it will, keep the seatbelt up here so when you pull it up and down it won't touch the seat at all I'll link it down below but again can't recommend it we don't use it but if you do use a back seat and you're worried about that I'll leave it down below for you next I want to talk about supercharging because when you buy a Model Y or any Tesla you're buying into the supercharger network and no better way to do that than to go to a supercharger so let's go ahead and head on to charge now the supercharger network it just works and you would expect that but this isn't the case with other evs we've taken this model y on one road trip about 4,000 miles to and from chicago no issues at all we've had our model 3 like i said for about 50,000 miles taken on three cross-country road trips and have never had an issue where we were stranded or had any major issues at the superchargers so if you're going to get a model y and are worried about the charging reliability You'll see some news on other EVs having issues at like Electrify America and ChargePoint and stuff like that. But for the most part, Tesla superchargers are flawless. When I say most part, I mean above 99% of the time they have a uptime, I think. That's what it's called. They just work. But I will say being here in Las Vegas, the one thing that does affect the chargers or at least the charging speed is the heat here. If it's like 115 degrees and the handle gets too hot, you will get a slower charging speed, but it's still faster than you would get at home or at other level two chargers, but the heat does slow it down. But on our road trips, rain, wind, ice, snow, it works. And what are those speeds actually like? Well, on our road trip, we were spending about 20 minutes, I would say, at each charger to get from like around 10% to around 75, 80%. And that may or may not seem like a long time, but on a long road trip after two, two and a half hours of driving, by the time we use the bathroom, grab the snack and do what we had to do, the car is ready to go. So if you're gonna go on a cross country road trip like that and are worried about this slowing you down, unless you have like an iron bladder, it's not gonna slow you down too much. It's getting pretty hot out here. So let's go in the car and wrap this up and talk about some things that we don't like. It's not perfect. So what we don't like about this car, the first thing I have to mention is the service because unfortunately, even though it's only been 10,000 miles, we have had to deal with them via a collision that was not our fault, but we still had to go through Tesla service. And I will say they've gotten better over the past few years. Uh, when we had to make an appointment, we had to wait about three or four weeks to get in. And then when we dropped our car off, it was about another three weeks for repairs, which I don't know if that was a lot or a little amount of time, depending on the damage that we had. But I know a couple of years ago, service was backed up like months to get your car in for a repair. And that is definitely not an issue anymore, at least not that long, but it's not immediate either. So if you do get in an incident like we did, unfortunately, it'll be at least a few weeks to get through the whole service appointment and repairs. I also want to mention depreciation. I don't think it's as big of a deal now as it used to be because a year and a half ago, these cars were selling for almost $70,000. And if you bought a car around that time, it has depreciated a ton. And that's very unfortunate for those guys. But the reason it has depreciated is because new cars have gotten so much cheaper, especially new Teslas have been so much more affordable since then. So if you get a new Model Y today, you'll hear about how much it depreciates over time, but you're not buying it at those peak rates that it was just a year and a half ago. It is so much more affordable today, which is why those older Model Ys have depreciated so much. So I'll mention it as like a dislike, but in reality, I don't think if you're in the market nowadays for a Model Y, it'll be that big of a deal. And lastly, number three, I wanna talk about Tesla insurance. When you buy a Model Y, you'll have Tesla insurance as an option to get your coverage from. 
and it will be typically the cheapest option, but you do get what you pay for. I have a whole video talking about what we had to go through with our incident here in this car that you see. If you wanna watch that about Tesla insurance, you can. But to summarize, it takes really long. It's really, really slow, the whole process, and it is basically impossible to get a hold of anybody. However, keep in mind, it is not mandatory. You can get insurance anywhere, but because we had to go through it, and you might see that being the cheapest rate, it's an option for you, and I just wanted to mention it in this video because it is part of our experience. So in summary, this is the best selling vehicle in the world. Not the best selling EV, the best selling vehicle, and that's for a reason. What you get for the price, the value of this car is unmatched in the industry, especially right now. The reliability is amazing, both when it comes to the vehicle and the charging network, and the low maintenance is something that we love about it. But to wrap it up, I'll hand it to you behind the camera, and I'll ask you, what are your final thoughts? I'm really excited to drive this car for a long time. And yeah, I'm just, I just felt safe driving it. You know, with a 10,000 miles, it's handling really good. I drive this every day for work. We, don't, we do home health, so we drive around a lot. And so far, so good. There you have it. After 10,000 miles, we both love it. Very excited to keep bringing this content to you all and keep driving this car and take you on our road trips and stuff like that. But for now, as always, catch you on the next one.